Hey everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Peter and today we're going to be making a DNA strands in Blender 3.61. So this is actually going to be my first YouTube tutorial on my channel. Uh, so bear with me. Uh, it might be a little rough at first, but hopefully I'm going to improve. Um, please leave a like if you guys do enjoy the content. And uh, without further ado, let's just get into it. Okay, so to start off, I did open up uh, Blender and deleted the default cube. So um, before we even actually start with this Blender file, I do want to look at a few of the different references uh, that I did find for this model of the DNA. Um, so let's go to Chrome real quick. Um, and here's what I found. So I was looking at a bunch of different variations. Uh, there's a different uh, way of making each DNA strand, but I think we're going to be looking at the structure first, uh, kind of just like uh, the double helix um, with a twist and then um, looking at how to render it. So I saw this one and I'm like, this is kind of cool, but I really like this uh, blue render right here uh, because I think it's going to be easier to make in Blender and I think it, uh, stylistically it just looks um, more organic to me. Uh, so uh, let's go back to uh, Blender and actually create this thing. So now that we're back in Blender, let's press Shift A to create a plane, add it in, and then let's make sure that before we do any edits that the magnet is on and that it is set to increment. So now that that's set, um, let's press tab and go into edit mode. And then we're gonna wanna move it with G and X along this X axis and just move it to the side. Once we've done that, uh, we wanna press period to focus and then press one to go into side view. Um, now I just want to extrude it up using E to enter three times in a row and uh, we'll just repeat it and that way it'll be even and the geometry will be evenly spread out on all sides. Uh, so next I want to press on this face over here and I want to um, actually delete it uh, because we won't be needing this top face or the bottom face um, uh, for this model. Uh, that way when we actually create the array modifier um, it'll just look like one continuous strip. Now I just select this side and I want you guys to inset it by 0.5, so 0.5 enter, there we go. And then we want to go into top view and extrude this out. So since we have snapping on, um, we can just focus on it and then um, extrude it all the way out to the middle. So what we want to do is when we take this, we want to take it to the green line, which is where the middle of the DNA strand is going to be and we just want to extrude it out like this. There we go. So now that we have that extruded out, we want to actually delete this face as well so that it doesn't create any issues with the geometry once we mirror it. So there we go. So now we have our first part of the DNA strand. We want to open up our panel to the side and go to the modifiers, which is like this little wrench over here. Now you want to add the first modifier, and the first modifier is actually going to be the subdivision surface modifier, which is all the way here at the bottom. Now um, it looks like it's working, so we just want to increase that resolution up to two, and then we want to shade smooth uh, or auto smooth, depending. Um, so yep, that looks great. So the reason is we used auto smooth is because when you shade smooth, usually um, and you have like sharper faces, uh, it'll create some like weird shading geometry and we just don't really want that. But uh, auto smooth is usually the safest way to go. So next we want to just rename this. Uh, I think this is just gonna be the resolution um, of our DNA strand. So I'm just gonna rename the modifier to resolution. So now let's go back and add another modifier. So the next modifier is actually going to be the mirror modifier. And it looks like it just works perfectly. Uh, sometimes when you click on the uh, modifier and it's set to a different axis, you just have to switch it around to make it look like the way that you want it. So we're just gonna set it back to the X, mod uh, X axis and then we're gonna turn on clipping. Now, the reason I turned on clipping is because when we move this, we actually want it to stretch and stay intersected. Um, if we didn't have clicking and merge on, then that wouldn't happen. So the merge is actually just the merge distance. Um, so how close do you want those um, intersections to be when the vertices are close to each other? And then clipping just ensures that um, it actually acts as it's intersected. 
Okay, so let's add another modifier, which is the array modifier all the way at the top. And we're just going to change this to length uh, because this is going to be how many rungs of the ladder, which you'll see in a second why I'm saying that, um, that we're going to have. Uh, so as of now, it's actually not set up correctly, but we're actually going to change it um, from being on the X axis to Z. But before we do that, let's add uh, the count to 14 and just change it. And then we're going to go down here to where it says X and turn that to zero. And then we're going to go down to Z and add one. So just type in one and then enter and boom, there we go. So now we have our rungs on the ladder, which is the length of our DNA strands. So we're almost done. We just have to add one more modifier, which is the simple deform modifier. So we're going to go down simple deform and select it. Um, so right now it's actually twisting in the wrong direction. That is because it's not set to the correct axis and it's creating this really squashed geometry. We don't actually want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually press the Z axis and it's going to switch it to the right direction for us. So now that it's correct, uh, it's a little bit too subtle. So let's just change the degrees to 360 and boom. Now we have our DNA strand. Now, the great thing about actually having it set up this way is uh, it's in a non-destructive format. So what we can actually do is we can look at this DNA strand um, from where we actually started by just turning off all these modifiers. So we can turn off the modifiers and it'll take us directly back to that very simple mesh form that we originally had. Now, because we set it up like this, we can also customize it in a bunch of different ways that uh, we want. So I'm actually going to go back to that render that I was originally looking at and see how it um, connects the strands. So you can see that little divide over there. I really like that instead of what we had in this one where it's just fully connected. So let's go back. Let's go to the mirror modifier and we actually want to turn off clipping and merging um, so that we can disconnect both of these and move them on the X axis. So let's move those on the X axis real quick. Uh, oh, yep. Turn off clipping. Uh, and now, as you can tell, they are no longer connecting as we turn it off, but they are still twisting in the way that we want them. So I'm actually going to move these slightly back to where there's a little bit of a gap. And I think that looks so much better, but I don't like this open face at the end of where these are. So to actually fix that, I want to go into selection mode and edge select this face right here. So press alt and then click and then press F. So once we've actually capped it off, um, it looks kind of weird because it's now creating this weird uh, shading on the end of it. To fix that, what we could actually do is we could go into the resolution of the subdivision modifier and turn it up and it'll look a little bit better. But I actually don't want to do that. I want to actually create a loop cut instead. So we're going to bring that back down to two and then we're going to press control R and create a loop cut and move it all the way up to where the edge is. Maybe not directly on it. So we had a little bit more of a curve and I think that looks great. I think that looks much better um, and it really caps it off the way that we want it. Now we could do that to this part as well, but since I wanted to extend um, an infinite amount, I really wanted to have it look continuous. So yeah, guys, this is the end of the tutorial. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, let me know what you guys thought. Uh, uh, don't forget to subscribe and like for more content. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna show you guys a few uh, renders that I actually ended up making from this. Uh, and I hope you enjoy.